And I guess we should start with some celebration today because it's exactly five years since the first Strimzy operator release. So I guess that's a birthday for Strimzy. So who's going to sing a happy birthday song? I guess nobody wants to embarrass himself, but we have a cake. <laughs> So happy birthday. That's great. I didn't now notice I that. Now I have to clean it up so that I don't set my <laughs> flat on fire. How long did you have it? Did you have the fire on? <laughs> yeah, I saw, no, I... I saw some smoke, but I thought it might. <laughs> some rituals Jakob is doing. <laughs> <laughs> morning rituals <laughs> just give me a minute to put it back into the fridge <laughs> have you been there since the beginning paulo sorry Ahmed. have you been there since the beginning Yes, yes. I was one of the the, the people injecting this pro this uh, this project. Yeah. So, so you, Jacob, and Tom. Yes, exactly. Yes, all together. Nice. So, just to be clear, it's not five years since we started it, or since the first code. It's since the first release, which kind of closely resembled operators. Also at that time, it was actually with config maps and not CRDs and stuff like that. So Jakub, I guess that you should, uh, so you should tweet about this. And uh, yeah. and that's a shame that we didn't take a picture of you with uh, the cake <laughs> because it was a, a good picture for the tweet. <laughs> You'll capture well, the recording. I, probably don't want to have my picture tweeted anywhere so <laughs> or can you can you just take a picture of the cake with the the five on to, on the top and then you can use that picture for the tweet you think i didn't already plan for that okay okay <laughs> no, i am scared that that you have already eaten the cake <laughs> in the in the last uh, two minutes oh <laughs> uh, yeah okay I guess we should get back to the normal agenda. Uh, can you see the screen? Right, so the first thing on the agenda is questions and issues. Does anyone have anything what's not on the agenda they want to discuss? Okay, not unusual that we don't have anything. Uh, so next are PRs and issues. So I added here a bunch of things, but Kyle is actually not here. So I guess we leave that for next time or? Yes. Okay, this one. So what about this one, Paulo? The evergreen of the 2023 year. Yeah, I, I thought that I approve it, this one. So I'm going to approve, to be honest, uh, so that we can even try this pipeline for the next bridge release and see if it will really save some time. Okay, next one is this. I don't see Marosh. Jakub, do you maybe know anything about this one? OK, 
Okay, I guess Jakub is not with us. Okay, let's leave a comment from our here. Or I guess that Jakub is just back. It was uh, away from keyboard. So yeah, Jakub, if you are, yeah, if you are here, do you know anything about this from Arash? No, I'm afraid not. Okay, let's leave him the command and see. Uh, we spoke a little bit about this yesterday, didn't we? Is, do we need to consider downgrades as well here? I don't know, feel free to comment about it on the PR, I guess. I actually it might have some downgrade as well in the code. Oh, it seems to be only upgrade. Okay, next one. Shuan, what about this one? Can you get the snake YAML away from it and do at least the vertex update? Uh, I, I, I didn't do the, like, I saw the comment from Paolo that, uh, that, that we are not getting the 4.3.8 version of vertex productized. So do we need it or? Yeah, but we should still update in the community, I guess. Okay, okay, I love you. And I think on the bridge, Paul updated Netty as well, so maybe we should bump Netty here as well. Okay, I'll do it. Okay, this one is another system test. I don't know, Jakub, if you have an idea. Yeah, I think Jan is working on that. Okay. Do you think so I... this will happen for the ZO34 release? Mm, I hope so. I will ask him in the office when he will arrive. Okay. And then we have the client examples in Python thing. Do we want to? Talk about that. I know it's draft and it's not like it's sitting there for weeks, but I know we had some offline discussions about what clients should be used and so on. Should we have uh, Owen on the call to talk about this? Well, he's not here, so we can leave it for next time if you want. Yeah, I would say that it makes more sense to have the owner of the PR. I think one thing Jakob mentioned in, uh, the other day was um, um, what we want the examples to be. Uh, so, so I think yeah, we should discuss the PR with Owen, but I wonder if um, uh, we should also agree on what, yeah, what the example should be so uh, this can direct Owen where to bring this. I think one point of Jakob was like uh, uh, demonstrating how to set up uh, 
authentication in uh, SSL, anything like that, uh, or how to do uh, error handling. Uh, so, so if we think those are like uh, characteristic we want to demonstrate in the example, I think we should make it clear or put this somewhere so so that people interested in in working on the examples know what to what to focus on. Well, it's from the examples. It's not Python client examples, right? So I think the focus should be on what's different with Strimzy. And that would be kind of how you deploy it, how you configure it for authentication and so on, which is not completely Strimzy unique, but like you create the user, you if you run it on Kubernetes, you have to somehow mount it and so on. So I think that's the focus of the Java examples. But it sounds like this part of creating the user and, and deploying it should be common to all examples. And then the client, all the client has to do to set up the uh, authentication. Sorry, not, I, I didn't hear it properly. Well, so you, you said like um, the example should demonstrate how to create a user, or how to get the user deployed, and, uh, and then how the client uses the user. But, but apart from the, the client bit at the end, how you create a user should be common to all examples, no? So, yes, it is common to all the examples, but it's not necessarily like we rely on the user operator, right? So, like for all the Java examples, you have essentially the Kafka user YAML, and you have like a single YAML how you can deploy the example. And that basically contains like the Kafka topic uh, for creating the topic, the Kafka user for creating the user. And then it has the deployment with the example client, which use the user. Yes, I guess so, this topic part and user part, yeah. In theory, it could be reused across all examples. And all you really need is to then use those in your example. Yeah, and from my experience, like that's what the users come to ask us most often, right? That they have uh, some uh, that they have some application they in Python or whatever, like in this case. And they want to connect it to the Strumzy broker configured for, I don't know, Scrum SHA or MTLS authentication. And they don't know how. I don't think the users are really coming to us to ask like, uh, how do I do this or that in uh, a Python client? It's more about kind of the, the configuration and connecting it. Okay, so so yeah, I think so. I don't know if Owen is aware of a bit, so I wonder if yeah, we should. Uh, since it seems to be like the as many interest in I think those clients examples, I think we should uh, make this clear. I don't know. So the Docker files are or like the authentication part that's missing in Paolo's Golang examples as well, where it should be, I guess, edit as well. But I'm not necessarily sure it's misunderstood, like the way I see it, may, maybe the first part, but it's also just a draft in the PR, so. Because you were mentioning that, uh, I have no plan right now to come back to the Go examples to improve them. So I don't know if you want to stick with them or we want to delete them and maybe in the future someone can work and add them. I don't know what's the what's the value of the examples. As we yeah, have as you right said, now for go like just, Yeah, it's just showing out to you the Sarama library. Does Sarama have three. no examples? Does Sarama have no examples on their own where the users can go, which are probably more 
up to date and show how the Sarama experts think it should be used? Yeah, I think so. They have this example. Maybe having uh, something in stream the could help people to, to not jump around to different repos and projects. So you, they go to StreamZ org, they deploy StreamZ, and then they found that we have these StreamZ examples and they can start from there. But I, I, I see your point that that should be about StreamZ, not about using Sarama client. So maybe we can just delete them. I, I, I'm totally fine to delete the, the Go examples because as I said, I, I have no plan to come back to improve them in the next uh, days or weeks. Well, maybe Owen might get to them then after he's finished with Python. Yeah, we can create a ticket. This may be a good starter. Yeah. Python. There, yeah. Okay, so I, I will create an issue about uh, the improvements that can we can uh, we should not don't go client. Okay. Anyone has any other issues they want to discuss? Oh, wait, I put this into the wrong place. So Marco is not here, but I guess we can ask him on this old issue what the plan is. Anyone has any other PR they want to discuss? If not, anyone has any proposals they want to discuss? I don't think there were any new proposals or any changes to the existing proposals. I guess Shubham's proposal for the blocking the scale down was merged, but the main thing there, I guess. Okay, in that case, it's issue triage next, if I can get rid of this Zoom window. So last time we said that we will think a bit more about this. And Kyle commented about it two hours ago, which doesn't give people much time to actually read what he commented about. So do we want to leave it for next time? Yeah, I would say yes. I had some conversation offline with uh, with uh, Kyle uh, in order to flesh out a couple of solutions, a more complex one and another simpler that I think makes more sense. Anyway, I will leave for uh, for next time with Kyle because he was mainly working on uh, on this. Okay. So then the next one is something I opened. Why are you still sending some messages which is opening this stupid window here? Did I mention that I hate Zoom? So this is like today we have the Kafka Connect assembly operator in the code and Kafka Mirror Maker 2 assembly operator. And they are very similar and they have only a few differences. But they use separate code. So I thought that there might be some space for, for kind of unifying them to at least use the same code, but ideally kind of use the same structure, but ideally even the same code. 
So I guess that's something that makes sense. Yeah. But I, I think we can mark it as a help wanted, but I don't think it's necessarily as easy to make it a good start. Okay, next one is similar. So I think we should use a bit more, try to use a bit more informers that should save some calls to the Kafka, uh, to the Kubernetes APIs and uh, should help us to get the data faster in some places. But I think there are some challenges like what labels to the informers target so that we don't watch for example all million secrets in the cluster or all million pods in the cluster and uh, so on and we would need to also think a bit through about how we will share the informers and use them with the resource operator supplier and so on I think that it makes sense to do this way, even because, uh, yeah, for people starting the new operator using the Java SDK, which is what was not in place when we started StreamZ, yeah, using the informers is kind of uh, the way to to go quite often. So. So should this need a proposal? I think like. This should be properly thought through, so maybe proposal is a good idea. Yeah. And I'm not sure, I think it's quite complicated through all the code, so I'm not sure I would really set it as help wanted because I think it would be quite hard to do for anyone who isn't really very familiar with the code base. Okay, the next one. It's about adding and from to the external configuration in Kafka Connect. I don't know how people feel about it. It seems to me like yet another thing we will have to test and maintain where the only value is that you replace 10 lines of YAML with five lines of YAML or something like that. Do we have any other way today to do something like this? You can do it. The, the thing which is pretty much suggesting <clears throat> Is uh, this window disappear? So we have this 
it's hard to find here. So we have this value from which basically allows you to pick a config map or a secret and map it as an environment variable. And what this thing proposed here does is uh, that it actually allows you to pick uh, multiple of them at once. So it basically saves some some lines in the in the YAML. But I my understanding from the issue is that it doesn't do anything really new apart from that. We can also try to ask again because the user didn't really come back when I asked about it. Yeah, maybe so I I I don't see to be honest any so additional value on this. Maybe we can ask uh, uh, to the user what's wrong or what does he find something I don't know wrong with the current way that uh, we we already have. Like this. Yes. Okay. So I guess we keep it for triage next time. Next one, we have a buck. If I manage to get to it. So it shows some netty error, but the user never provided a full log. So I guess we ask for it again and close it if it's not provided. Or? Yep. Okay, next one. So this one is interesting. So today we basically set up the network policies only where needed, which is where the cluster operator or other component is connecting. And where we do that, we set them up to open the Prometheus metrics for everyone. But where we don't need to create any other any network policies for some other reason, like for the entity operator or for the Kafka exporter, because we don't connect there directly, there we actually don't set up any network policies. So if you have networking with disabled access by default. It's a bit weird because when you deploy the cluster, <clears throat> then uh, like you will be able to access the metrics of Kafka or cruise control out of the box, but you will actually not be able to access the metrics of Kafka exporter or entity operator out of the box because the network policies are missing. So the proposal was to create network policies for, for these components as well, so that we are a bit more 
consistent and it's a bit more kind of predictable and less confusing for the user. Yeah, I think that makes sense because if I have some components and they are exporting metrics, I would expect to be able to access them, right? I know that uh, it depends on the fact that you have more restricted policy in your uh, OpenShift or Kubernetes installation, so deny by default something like this. But uh, I agree that at least the metrics uh, should have a network policy to be exported and accessible. I guess the bridge, what do we do for the bridge? We cannot do much there because the metrics are on the same port as. Yes, as the, yeah, the REST API. Yeah, so we shouldn't do anything there. Yes. So I guess we want to add the network policies for the entity and Kafka exporter. Yeah. Do you think that could be a good start issue? Well, I I I, I think so because uh, yeah, it should not. Yeah, it should not be so difficult to be honest. Even taking a look at how the other network policies are created. Okay. Next one. So that's this thing from Kyle. That cruise that we should automatically set the hard goals to match the default goals when they are not provided. Yeah, we can talk and waiting for Kyle, of course. Uh, I left a comment where um, yeah, I'm not totally convinced that we should do something automatically uh, because right now the user can uh, get at least from the log and understand that he made a mistake. Um, and uh, yeah, doing some automatically doesn't help the user to understand that he made a mistake, maybe forgotten some hard goal in the list that he wanted to add. Um, but yeah, let, so let's wait with, for Kyle. It's another issue that we should triage with him, I guess. Okay. Hopefully he joins next time. And then we had this uh, issue about better logging examples. is actually, I guess, for documentation, not for examples. I guess that might make sense to have an example like that. Or two, I think you can Google it very easily. But I guess it wouldn't hurt to have it in, in the docs. Sorry, sorry, I was away from the keyboard for a minute. Is there something related to documentation here then? Yeah, there's this issue about uh, logging examples in the docs. Okay. Right. Yeah, I think it makes sense. We have kind of something similar for the bridge documentation about the single API operations. So it makes sense to have something for the Kafka and uh, yeah, for logging on a specific class. Okay, 
what labels do we want to set on that? Do we want to leave it for some user or? Or? Well, it should be kind of trivial, so you should know how it works. But maybe do you mean a good start? Yeah, it could be a good start. Like this? Yep. Okay. And I closed my needs triage window, but I think that was it what we had for the triage, right? Yeah, these are all the ones which we skipped. So, next point on agenda, or does anyone have any other issue they want to triage? I don't think so. Huh? Next point on agenda is the Strumzy test container future. But I don't see Tom Bentley and I don't see Marosh on the call. So I guess we skip it for next time. Yep. <clears throat> yep. Uh, just for the record, Marsh did a new release with the new Kafka versions, uh, so at least that's now available. Okay, that's the end of the agenda. Does anyone have any other business? In that case, I guess that's it for today. So thanks a lot for joining and see you again in two weeks. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye all. Bye.